Hello and welcome to Sports Fan Entertainment. 32 teams, 32 days, and today we are talking about the San Francisco 49ers as a part of my 2017-18 season previews. Remember to head over to sportsfanentertainment.com for the article previewing the 49ers. The link to that article will be down in the description box below. You know, it was very funny. I went back and I looked at my 2016-17 season uh, predictions. Um, and I had the 49ers going 2-14. and 14. If you go back to that video, man, I got so much hate. It is ridiculous. I got 97 dislikes. I had them going 2-14. and 14. They went 2-14. and 14. So, I think I know this team pretty well. What will they do this upcoming season? We're going to look at this team, look at their strengths, weaknesses, give you some bold predictions for this team, give you a fantasy outlook for this team, and end this video with a win-loss prediction for the 49ers. Now... Strengths for this football team. I have to reach a little bit because we have to kind of project with this 49er team We like the influx of talent that we have, but we're gonna rely on rookies a bit So just keep that in mind. So first of all, I like their linebackers We have the returning Navarro Bowman in the middle of this defense now Here's the funny thing about Bowman. We keep looking at him and thinking. Oh, yeah, he's old He's only 29. The problem is this guy just had too many injuries every year. It seems like he can't stay healthy. But when he's on the field, he's impactful. And there were rumors that the 49ers were considering cutting him, but he showed up to training camp and he's looked decent, so they're going to keep him. We'll see if his legs hold up, but if he returns to form, he's going to be good. How about Reuben Foster, who the 49ers selected in the first round of the 2017 NFL Draft with, I believe, the 31st overall pick? Yes, it was. Uh, this guy's going to make an impact, okay? Um, I have questions about his mentality, but in terms of being on the field, being a football talent, and this guy is talented, he's going to make an impact for the 49ers. Now, Malcolm Smith doesn't look like he's going to play this year. Currently has an injury, so that's concerning, but... You also have Eli Harold and Ahmad Brooks who are going to come down a bit on the defensive line, also stand up a bit. Um, to me, that's an interesting combo. I don't like either ones as starters, but rotating those guys to me is an interesting conversation. So I think the linebackers could end up being quite good about league average for the NFL, which to me is a requirement for a strength. But how about the defensive line? I do actually really like the defensive line and really encouraged by the uh, defensive line. But yet again, we have to rely on a rookie. Okay, if Solomon Thomas, the number three overall pick on the 2017 NFL draft. If this guy comes and makes an impact, and I think that he will, this defensive line could be quite good because you have him. Okay, this guy to me could be the next Aaron Donald, and this guy, he has such great measurables, such great strength, such great intangibles, mentally really smart, came from Stanford, knows how to play football really well. This guy could be really, really good, an elite pass rusher, interior defender in the NFL. We have DeForest Buckner, whom we drafted last year at the 2016 NFL draft with the seventh overall pick. This guy had a nice rookie year. You expect him to add upon that and improve as a player. Arik Armstead, he lost weight. He's going to play the Leo role for this Adam Sala defense this upcoming year. I'm intrigued by this guy in that kind of role. He lost weight. He's looking lean. He's looking mean. Can't wait to see what he does. You guys signed Earl Mitchell firmly of the Miami Dolphins. He's not great, but He's a decent defensive lineman, so this defensive line could end up being pretty good this year. Quentin Dial also in the mix here. I'm intrigued by the defensive line in San Francisco, but again, I can't go all in saying, yeah, it's going to be so good. There are still some questions here because we're relying on rookies quite a bit for this team. So outside of that, I can't see any more really strong positions for the 49ers. So let's go to weaknesses now. We have to go to the quarterback position. Okay, so for right now, it's a weakness. Let's start with Brian Hoyer, who to me will start the season but not end it. Okay, he's looked good in training camp, we've heard. In preseason, I haven't seen it, okay? And I just refuse to believe that it's going to be anything better than the bottom 10 quarterback in the NFL this year. I know last year he had like six touchdowns to zero interceptions, but... Come on, this guy is just not very good, guys. We get it. He'll have some decent games, but also will have some disastrous games. We just can't rely upon Brian Hoyer, right? You guys know he's not the future in San Francisco. But, okay, this is intriguing, and this story is going under the radar. C.J. Beathard, okay, who the 49ers selected, I believe, in the fourth round of this year's draft out of Iowa. This guy's been playing well in the preseason. I was looking at this guy's tape yesterday, and I was pretty encouraged, pretty impressed. I have my eyes on this kid. Okay, but I still think Hoyer will start. So for right now, this position's weakness. And Beathard, when the regular season starts, may not be good anymore. So we have to look out for that. But 
definitely right now the quarterbacks is weakness right now for San Francisco. Guys, you can't debate this. Okay, cornerbacks, weakness for this team. Tremaine Brock, domestic violence. Okay, he's gone. He's cut. No more. Okay, don't love this position then. Okay, Rashard Robinson, who you guys took last year. I mean, I like his potential. He's pretty lengthy, uh, long arms, lanky. Uh, you know, needs to put on some weight. But, you know, last year struggled a bit, but also show some upside. I'm intrigued by this guy. But other than him, we have Dante Johnson, Akella Witherspoon uh, out of Colorado, whom you guys drafted, who I'm encouraged by, but a rookie there. There's just no proven corners here. You know, no one that you can look for and look to and say, oh, yeah, this guy's a proven corner in this league. He's good. Or a really high draft pick even. That's not even there, right? So the cornerbacks right now in San Francisco, it's a problem. It's not very good. And Jimmy Ward is moving over to free safety. So cornerbacks, a problem. Wide receivers. I, I mean, I, I don't think it's the worst in the league. But I, I do think it's probably borderline uh, bottom 10. So to me, it's a weakness right now. Pierre Garçon. He's fine, but he's not a number one guy. He's a number two guy for a really good quarterback, right? So for Ben Roethlisberger and Matthew Stafford, he's a decent number two. For Blake Bortles, he's not a good number two for him, right? He's not helping Blake Bortles a lot, right? Because Bortles stinks already as it is. So for Brian Hoyer, is he really going to help Brian Hoyer? Not much. In the preseason, he hasn't been that impressive. He hasn't been targeted at times. Um, he's getting open a decent amount, but... He's not blowing cornerbacks away or anything. I mean, think about this guy. We were talking about this guy back in like 2008, 2009, receiving passes from Peyton Manning in his prime. You know, this guy's been around for a while. You guys gave him a five-year deal. I think he'll be decent, but just not great, right? Marquise Goodwin, okay? So you have a, you have a number two, uh, and Pierre Garçon is your number one. You have Marquise Goodwin, who's a number three, is your number two. A number three or number four in Goodwin. I mean, he's a deep threat. Um, and he looks like he's developing more, you know, more than that. Like in preseason, I see a good route tree from this guy. But for right now, he's like a number three in the NFL at best right now for the average NFL team. Jeremy Curley, okay, at least now he's down the depth chart. I think he's a true number three in this league. So I have no problem with that. Um, you guys drafted Trent Taylor, okay, this year, out of this year's draft. He's the number five right now. This guy can make an impact, but right now he's a rookie. We'll see what he does. So wide receiver is not great, but also not the worst in the league. I want to be clear on that. It's not the worst in the league at all. So positions that to me are neither strengths nor weaknesses. Let's start with the offensive line. Um, it to me, it's okay, okay? Joe Staley. Now, last year actually was a bit of a down year for him, but he was still good, okay? He gave up five sacks in 13 games, which is high for him, but he was still good. Good left tackle in the league. Okay, you drafted Trent Brown, I think, last year, okay? And he actually had a decent year, um, so I'm curious by this guy. Center, Daniel Kilgore. Okay, he's an okay center. The guards right now is a question mark. Joshua Garnett's nursing injuries. Last year wasn't good, okay? He, he looks like a bust. I, I thought he was a bust last year. We'll see what happens, but right now it's problematic with him. Zane Beatles, Brandon Fusco, don't love these guys as guards right now in the NFL. Don't love the guards, but the tackles are okay. Actually, maybe even pretty good. So, offensive line to me is somewhere in the middle. Tight end. You know, I hit it on Vance McDonald a bit last year, but when I considered it, look, he got 350 receiving yards roughly. For a passing game that had 3,100 yards. That's about 10%. That's not bad, okay, for a tight end in this league. So, um, I mean, it's not great, but it's not a weakness, okay? I mean, he's probably maybe like the 20th best tight end in the league, right? So, it's not great. I, I want to be clear. It's not great, but I don't think he's a, a real bad player. Um, you look at the other positions for this team, running back, okay? So some people are going to argue running back should be a strike. Look, Carlos Hyde, three years now, two years as a starter, hasn't broken 1,000 yards. I can't say you're a strike. Without 1,000 yards as a running back, I can't say you're a strike. Last year, would have broken if he played 16 games. He, he didn't because he doesn't. He doesn't play 16 games. So I can't say he's a strength yet. Uh, there's a reason why they haven't re-signed him or they're not really looking to re-sign him or extend him right now. He probably will end up leaving i think next year and i think they're going to be fine with that kyle shannon isn't in love with this guy i think he's gonna have a down year they're gonna give carriage to other guys like joe williams so i don't think it's a strength joe williams the rookie i'm intrigued by this guy but hasn't made a huge impact in preseason uh but he's been he's actually been you know you, you've seen some uh some you know, potential with him I'll, I'll give you that and that Breda undrafted uh, guy that's coming in and, and looks like a good receiving uh, back so i'm intrigued it's actually maybe average maybe a little bit average but it's not bad it's not a weakness for this team but not a strength either guys it's just not um especially last year carlos had, had a good year because chip kelly uh chip kelly's running scheme really allows for uh, you know, running backs have success, so just consider that as well. He may have a down year this year just because Chip Kelly's gone. Kelly did help that, and nothing more than that, but the run game he helped. 
Okay, other positions for this team. Safety, Jimmy Ward, Eric Reed. Uh, Eric Reed had a down year last year, but I expect him to bounce back. Jimmy Ward, the free safety. We'll see how he does committed at this position long term. Can't say either strength or weakness quite yet for that position. Look at my fantasy projection for this football team, and you may be surprised. But I have C.J. Beathard leading the way. I think he's going to start midseason. Um, I think it's going to be clear by midseason the 49ers aren't that good. And they're going to want to know what they have in C.J. Beathard, as will I. So I'm starting nine games, 1,900 passing yards, 10 touchdowns, and 7 interceptions. And he's going to create an interesting conversation because, again... When you look at the rookie quarterbacks this year, right, we have Trubisky, Deshaun Watson, Deshaun Kaiser, uh, Patrick Mahomes. I think bather has been maybe the second or third most impressive one. I think Trubisky's probably been number one. Kaiser, we'll see what he does tonight on Monday Night Football. I think bather has been pretty impressive, man. I'm intrigued by C.J. Bather right now. And the thing against him coming out was he doesn't have great arm strength. But I saw him toss a ball from the 40-yard line. It was a Hail Mary, but toss a ball from the opposite 40-yard line. Down to the goal line. Didn't quite make it in, but it, I think he's fine right now, C.J. Beathers. So we'll see with this guy. Carlos Hyde, um, I think he's going to have a down year, and I think he's gone after this year. I only see 175 carries, 750 yards, five touchdowns. I think they give carries to Joe Williams and Matt Breda. And I think he really gets phased out of this offense. I think Kyle Shanahan won't love him in this offense, but I could be completely wrong on this. Maybe he'll flourish like Devontae Freeman. Um, and then Pierre Garçon, not a great year. You know, some people love him in fantasy. I don't because this is still not a prolific passing game in San Francisco. You know, we'll be lucky if combined we get 3,500 passing yards out of this offense. So to me, do not is he going to get 1,000 yards? Is he going to get a, a third of the market share? I, I don't see that. So I see uh, 70 catches, 875 yards, four touchdowns. So you can draft this guy. I'm not saying he's undraftable, but... Take a thousand yard receivers, you know, surefire a thousand yard receivers before you take this guy. Uh, this guy. Okay, bold prediction. CJ Beathard starts for most of the year. Again, I talked about that earlier. I, I think this is bold, but I, honestly, I'm intrigued by this guy right now. Joe Williams, okay, the rookie running back. I think he starts by December. That's bold prediction number two. And bold prediction number three Solomon Thomas get seven plus sacks this rookie season for the 49ers. I really like Solomon Thomas. And as an interior defender, this would be really good. Seven plus sacks. I think he gets it. Man, defensive rookie of the year is going to be a hell of a battle this year. Derek Barnett, Solomon Thomas, Miles Garrett, Jamal Adams. Finally, we have some defense coming into this league. I can't wait for it. It's going to be really nice to watch. Things finally starting to balance out in the NFL a little bit. All right, so we move on to the 49ers schedule. And here's the problem with the schedule, people. Um, there aren't teams that you're better than, okay? I don't see one team that you are surefire better than. Now, I see one team or two teams that you're at least on the level of, okay? So this would be the Bears, the Jags, and like the Rams, maybe. And I think the Jags are way more talented than you, but right now the quarterback situation is a mess. Um, the Rams are looking decent right now with Jared Goff. Their offense was flying around against the Raiders, albeit, but their offense was flying around the other day. And the Bears, I think you guys are better than them, but you travel to Chicago. So we got problems here. But I will say this. We're not going to go game by game today. Uh, I will say this. I think you guys beat the Rams once, okay? Um, probably in San Francisco. It's a Thursday night game. You guys tend to beat L.A., you know, on, on the big lights you guys did last season, week one. I predicted that. Yay me. I think it happens again. Okay. I think you guys will beat the Jaguars. Although this is... I don't love saying this, you know. Uh, even in my Jaguars video, I don't think I even said that. But I'll say today, I think you'd be the Jaguars. Okay, elsewhere, I, I don't see wins, okay. We have Carolina, better than you. At Seattle, they're way better than you, and it's in Seattle. Arizona, maybe you could trip them up. Okay, but I, I just can't predict that today. Indianapolis, better. Washington, better. Dallas, better. Philly, better. Arizona, better. New York Giants, better. The, uh, Houston, better. Tennessee, better. LA, better. All these teams are better. They're just better. Okay, but I'll tell you this. Best case scenario, because Kyle Shanahan, we don't know what to really expect from him as a head coach. And every year we see these teams that did really bad the year before. Some of them overachieve or seem to overachieve and do quite well because they just take the shape of a team that we just haven't seen before, right? And it's unexpected, but they do really well. 
I mean, if this defense comes together, Solomon Thomas is really good, Ruben Fox is really good, uh, Jimmy Ward settles in at safety, uh, some cornerbacks step up, perhaps you guys could go 6-10. I, I can see that, right? Maybe the, a couple teams in your division take a step back, like the Cardinals, for some reason they stink, and the Rams still don't improve, you get some wins there, and there's some wins elsewhere. But 6 wins is high and go. Uh, worst case scenario, it could be 2 and 14 again. Probably not 1 and 15. I think you guys have better talent than the Jets. Okay, so I think that's that I can say that, but not much more than that. Now, my prediction, and I think this is even a little rich, I'm saying 4 and 12. Because again, I don't even see teams y'all are better than on the schedule. But I think what's going to happen is there will be moments where you're facing a team, they have their backup quarterback, and you get a victory there. Um, you guys sneak up on a team that uh, that's underwhelming this season. You get a victory there. And there are teams that we are currently not seeing that will suck more than you. Okay, and it'll shock us then. Uh, but for right now, we just don't see it. So my prediction is 4-12 and 12 for the San Francisco 49ers. I cannot go higher than that. But it wouldn't shock me if they were better than that. We just have to see this team take form. Because you don't really know what they're going to look like under Kyle Shanahan and this new regime. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on the 49ers upcoming season. What are your thoughts? Comment down below. I want to know. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, to subscribe. And until next time, this has been MJ of Sports Fan Entertainment. And I'm out. See you all later.